Well, let me um, start with where I think Holy Spirit wants us to start today. <clears throat> One of the things that has been on my heart is to get us to realize um, that God has really got a plan for us. He wants us to be active in that plan. <clears throat> but he also wants us to um, do more than be sedentary. And <clears throat> it's hard, for, and it's 9-11 as I speak. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, he, he wants us to just really get to the place where what everybody else thinks is supernatural is natural. Is that, you know, we should expect miracles every day. We should expect healing every day. Um, you know, I've spent years going through the different camps of having people lay hands on you, okay? And we all love that, don't we? I mean, I like I like it when people lay hands on me because I am feel like I'm receiving their anointing and, and receiving more of the blessings of God. But I think what what I hear in my heart is he just wants us to realize that should be a constant state, okay? I mean, we should be able to casually reach over to the person, you know, in the grocery store and just be able to deliver enough anointing. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. That it would change their lives. Okay. <clears throat> and we don't have to wait till the big dog comes in to pray for us. That's, you know, and that's really been my heart is that we all begin to learn how to let the prayers come and, and to be there for us so that we <coughs> can do that. Um, I realized that that was part of my faith walk and faith journey was I would get to the place I'm like, well, I don't feel it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, do y'all hear me? I don't feel it yet, so I, don't, I can't touch anybody yet because I don't feel anything yet. So I need to feel something before I can touch somebody. Well, he began to show me that what he really wants us to do is touch them and then you'll feel it. Right. Okay. Uh, it's, it's that faith act. I can remember, I've shared this many times, the very first time he really had me step out, I had a headache. Okay. That's not a really lovely thing to announce, you know, when you're like, you know, people are wanting you to pray for their healing and you have a headache. And I can remember this lady coming up to me and says, I've just had a horrible headache for days. And I'm thinking, this isn't going to work real well. Because <laughs> I have a headache. How am I going to get rid of her headache if I have a headache? You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't do that. Y'all don't ever go through that kind of arguing with God about this stuff. <laughs> and he said, it's not you that's healing them. And I had to start remembering that. It wasn't me. I'm just the vessel. So if somehow he can get the headache cleared in her through me, then I need to be the one that lays hands on it, even if I'm having the headache. And so I did, and miraculously, the woman's headache stopped. Amen. Mine did not. <laughs> now I'm going, what? What? <laughs> you know, if I had enough juice going through me to get her headache healed, couldn't it heal mine in the process of doing that? Do you hear how silly that is? But it's so true. And as I sit there, I go, well, I did what you asked me to do. And in that instant, guess whose headache went? Mm. Mine. So I learned a lesson in that obedience is what he's after. Obedience is what he's after. So since then, no matter whether I felt like I had the anointing or had the juice or had the whatever else, you just be obedient. Because again, we're just the vessel. We're not the deliverer. We're not the one that's actually doing the supernatural healing on it. I've noticed that it's exciting when people actually get a touch from God. Um, we've had a person in our congregation that got a touch from God. And uh, when they got it, it's one of the first times they really felt him strongly. And it was so overwhelming and powerful to them 
that, you know, they're still living the high because that's what I call it when you get that real touch. You know, you're just like mm, out there for days. <clears throat> what I hear Holy Spirit saying is, I'd really like you to live out there all the time. I'd really like you to just be so in tune with me that if I need to zap, and my kids called it zapping, okay, when they were little, they'd go, be careful, mom will zap you, okay. And because they had been with me in so many prayer lines where I was the one praying for people or delivering people, and they were young boys. They were like eight, nine, and ten. And so they called it zapping because that's the best way they could describe you got touched and you went down or you flipped or you did something, okay? And somewhere in their mind, that's how they described God's power being done. So they would talk about zapping. So I got to thinking, well, that's kind of how I think. I'm zapping them, okay? I'm trying to bring God to them. What he began to show me throughout the years is zapping was not only something that got their attention, but it needed to be something that I carried with me and allowed to come with me as if it's an atmosphere or a bubble around you. So there should be around us, technically, this atmosphere of God that's so primed and so ready and so anointed that anybody even getting close to it should be able to feel the zap, okay? Anybody getting close to it or anybody doing that. <clears throat> and as I... Um, hopefully matured. I, I think there's still a lot of areas that he's working on me, but uh, I just keep realizing that it's me maintaining that atmosphere. It is me, okay? It's not something I can do a one and done. So it's something I need to do constantly listening to Holy Spirit to say, what do you need to do to clean something up if you've gotten too close to something or someone sent an attack or something. How do you be like a good housekeeper? <clears throat> so, um, I'm not going to compare housekeeping skills to you all today. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> the, uh, go ahead and pull it down. I was like trying to figure out which one it is. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really the, the deep cleaner person, Okay. That maintenance stuff, hmm, that's really hard for me, okay? Because I can go a couple of weeks and look and go, oh, I think we might need to dust, okay? Now, I know there are those of you that dust probably daily. You don't need to talk to me. <laughs> <coughs> I'm, I'm with Irma Bombeck that that's how I taught my children the alphabet, was in the oh. dust on the coffee table. <laughs> Just leave it alone. You know, you make do with what you got. It was creative. <laughs> and they would go around hunting for all the places they could write it out. <laughs> And then I said, be sure after you write it that you wipe it away. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to use what you got to use. Okay. <clears throat> but that maintenance stuff is, it's not as fun to me. I would rather go into a house that just needs a total revamp and go to the deepest parts and dig in it and clean it all up. And that's to me is much more fun than the weekly vacuuming, the weekly dusting, the weekly doing all those things. <clears throat> so I used to have to play games with myself to make myself do the weekly stuff. Okay, like you can go play with the good stuff if you'll do this, okay? You can go read that if you do this. And I had to just really I'm just being vulnerable here. I just had to really talk to myself because I hate the maintenance stuff, okay? It's why I'm a dreamer and a birther. I don't enjoy that. Now, there are people in my family that are maintenance, like, you know, every Tuesday you do this, every Wednesday you do this. And, and I know how to do that. I used to teach people how to do it, okay? I had a whole index box of cards on this is what you do on cleaning this is what you do daily this is what you do weekly this is what you do monthly this is what you do every single literally it was yeah it was sad those are my <clears throat> ocd days but what god began to show me is it's the same way in maintaining my house for god 
Do I maintain it daily? Do I maintain it weekly? Or do I let a little dust come in or just hide it or wow. ignore it or whatever? Okay. Because I really like the deep cleaning. Remember that part? I can go in and just deep clean on you guys all day long and be happy and thrilled and everything else. It's that constant maintenance thing that is harder for me. So I don't know what your hard part is, but that's what he showed me. The more I maintained, the more glory I could gain and carry. And that's what it is. So <clears throat> one of the things that I want, you know, when we first started here, we did a lot of praying for people. The healing team would pray almost every Sunday. If anybody had needs, they would pray for that and do that. And throughout that time, we've just kind of slowed up with a lot of that. We pray for each other. But I didn't want it, and this is the thing that was my heart, I didn't want it to be where just everybody came to me to get prayer. I just think that's not right. I think what we need is the body of Christ ministering. Because you get practice, you get better. Okay? The more you get to practice, the more your faith is stretched and done that for. So I just keep Holy Spirit saying, I just keep hearing him say to me, Everybody needs to keep their maintenance up for themselves so when we come together collectively, we can jointly supply, you know, and make it to where the zapping should be pretty good, okay? It should be better than what we've experienced. <clears throat> my heart and my goal is to be like Jesus. Jesus did crazy things like say, go, and every demon was gone. Okay, I'm waiting for that moment. Uh -huh. Okay, and I'm believing for that moment, but we're practicing getting to that moment. Uh -huh. So the only way we get to that moment is to get them out of us, to get them off of us, to clean our house, so to speak, so that when we get to that moment, they full well know there's nothing inside of us they can trigger. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's nothing inside of us they can trigger. And so uh, it makes us somewhat complacent because I remember when I first started digging, I'm thinking, well, that was good. Now we're done. And then I saw the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. And, you know, some 40 years later, I'm still working on the layers. And I'm thinking, let's make it faster. Yes. Let's get it quicker. How do we do that? <clears throat> well, I realized that what I was doing is just like I shared Sunday. And I was playing in that 5% of what I could see and know. And I was cleaning it all up really well. Okay, got everybody, it looked pretty good. It was the 95% of the matter and energy that's in the unseen realm that was playing havoc on me because I didn't take into consideration it was out there. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> there are some prayers that I believe the Holy Spirit will give us. These are called apostolic prayers, and I alluded to them Sunday. <clears throat> but I wanted to just read out of them today. Because in these apostolic prayers, you begin to think of a, it on a higher level. You begin to think of it as, um, this is not for just the apostles. This is for us. So are you operating in those places? And the first one I want to start with is in Ephesians. <clears throat> Just Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, I, I, Holy Spirit just keeps saying, this is, how, this is how I maintain. I have to take these apostolic prayers and I have to put them into where it's like, um, how can I say this, Lord? It's like prayer should be become part of your DNA, okay? You're thinking of physical DNA a lot of times, what's physically wrong with you, but you have spiritual DNA. And when you take these prayers and you give the Holy Spirit permission he literally gets to take these prayers and come into your spiritual DNA and change it. 
Change it to what it's supposed to be. Change your soul DNA to what it's supposed to be. We know scientifically that, let's say I scrape some cells from the inside of your mouth and I put them in a test tube <clears throat> and I had you hold them in your hand. We know that technically, if I had you watch scary shows or demeaning shows or really violent shows as you were holding that DNA, when we tested it, we could literally see the damage to the DNA from just you participating or watching those things. In the same token, could take that same DNA that you just damaged from that and we could have you watch wholesome things or uplifting things, positive things, and as you hold that DNA, it would literally change. Okay, now that's just your physical DNA. What I hear him saying to you is your spiritual DNA and your soul DNA needs that same influx, that same uh, programming, that same exposure, if you will, to the good things. Because whether you realize it or not, you get exposed to a lot of the bad stuff. Um, I, I wish and I believe that at some point our spiritual eyes will be so open that you can actually see those frequencies that are negative frequencies and you can realize how bad they are for you. We understand how bad some electronic things are for us. You know, like uh, don't live under a high line. Okay, how hard is that? <clears throat> because we can prove to you all the electricity that's coming from that is disruptive to you. I just noticed last night Gary was flipping through channels and he flipped onto a channel and I, I don't, I was just walking through and it, it probably wasn't on a minute what he was just hearing, but it was enough garbage in just that minute that I thought, I'm going to have to go clean up, okay? That's how I felt because it was more sensitive to, I could just feel that. I could feel it coming. You don't realize there are all kinds of principalities and powers that are sending out these same frequencies to you all the time. Mm -hmm. So if your shields aren't up and you're not protected, you're receiving them, okay? Uh, the neighbors in your house next door to you, unless you've shielded up, hello, I don't know what your neighbors are like. <coughs> Gary says, I won't go visit mine, but we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> I did that once. I won't do that again. No, I'm kidding. But it's like, are you aware of those things? So what he showed me was when I take these apostolic prayers, I turn them into frequencies. I turn them into things that will change my DNA so that my DNA comes in alignment with this and it makes this make more sense, okay? Because... I can read these words, and if they're just words, they're not having the power. But if I let Holy Spirit bring them to life, then when I put them in, it's literally like I'm getting new DNA strands, okay? So on your DNA, there, there are places where things are broken or messing or missing or hurt or whatever, literally, you can change your physical DNA by taking these prayers and putting them into you. I mean, that's, I know we hear that, but I don't think you realize it, but you can actually change who you are. So when I pray, I say, I command all my cells to duplicate to the original design of God. I don't have them duplicate to the last cell. Because the last cell was still broken or missing or messed up. I want them to go back to the original copy to do that. So when you're reading these prayers, you're reading that original copy. You're reading what he wants to program into you. And what it does is it produces a different atmosphere and a different portal for you to be able to carry more of his glory. So that technically if you needed to zap that you know, person in Walmart. Wouldn't that be fun? It would be a different world. Wouldn't it be fun? Hi. <laughs> and not say anything else. <laughs> I, I When I had the laughing anointing on me, 
I would do that to people <laughs> just because it was fun. <laughs> I love it. And they had no idea what was going on, but it was fun. Gary said, do not touch me. That was my best. Right there. <clears throat> okay. Ephesians chapter 1, verse, I'm going to start with verse 17. I pray that the Father of glory, see, we're already tapping in. That's what we're wanting, the glory. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ would impart to you, these, this is what we're just asking for, the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Wow, people, <clears throat> one way of saying that is the spirit of discovery, okay? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about, can I get you to open up your eyes to see what wisdom? So he's technically saying, no longer are you going to be in this 5%. I want to open up the spirit of wisdom and revelation to you to bring a whole different thing. To know him through your deepening intimacy with him. And that is the key. Once you realize I can't give you Jesus, he can only give you Jesus. I can't fix your maintenance prayers. I can't dust for you. You have to dust for yourself. Okay. I like it when the merry maids come in. Do you guys like it when the merry maids come in? I like it when they come in and clean. It's nice. Okay. But to maintain it, if they're not on a constant rotation, then you have to do your own maintenance. And that's what I tell the healing team all the time. I says, when you get those people that are just coming to you because they want maintenance. I'm trying to get to the mic. It's all right. You're, you're forgiven, my love. When, when we have people that only want the merry maids to do the work, are you hearing me? They don't want to do the work themselves. They want you to clean it up. They want you to do the next step. And they want you to do all the stuff. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. So I caution them all the time. I say, when you get one of these people, you're going to have to realize at some point you're going to have to put it back on them. We want to help them. But at some point, they're going to have to start doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Because it's you. You have to have the deep. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. Oh my goodness. If I could have nothing else for you, that would be it. I would pray that God's light flips your lights on so you can see what's in this 95%. Because way too many people are way too comfortable with the five and they don't intend to go out any farther. They don't intend to jump from the airplane or they don't intend to do whatever else. Okay, but let him change our eyes so we can see. I think in the imagination, we've had so many wrong understandings of imagination. Uh, we're not talking so much evil fantasy, okay? We're talking imagination. It is a gift from God. It is what God gave you so you could learn to be a creator. If you can't imagine it, it's really hard for you to believe for it. Okay, so you have to be able to imagine it. I have a lot of people that when I was designing <clears throat> rooms and houses and different things, I would come in and I'd explain to them what I thought, and they'd go, I can't see it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't see it. I can't, and I'm like... So we would have to go to almost boards, and nowadays they have all the technology to just flip out the iPad and change the colors and everything else. But do you see the difference? They couldn't see it. They couldn't. Their imagination was not allowing them to go into that place to paint the walls or to make different colors shift or change. So <clears throat> if you have had teachings that told you imagination is evil, then that's where you start cleaning yourself and getting the right DNA. Because God gave us the ability to imagine because that's part of our creator gift. If I, I'm supposed to be a creator. I'm supposed to be creating things for God. I can't create things from God if my whole playbook is my things that everybody else has seen and I'm just reproducing. What he wants to be able to do is have you realize to be a creator, you've got to go into that next place where you let him <laughs> give you the blueprint let him give you the imagination and it does mean 
dancing. You know, one of the people that I love so much is just quite a dancer, and she sees color. I mean, that's, that's, she just, everything's like color to her. It's like swirling and, you know, dancing. So when she's moving, she is literally, as she moves her arms, they, they are shooting out colors, okay? And she's just dancing. And what she is is she's creating by all these swirls of color. So it's almost like her whole body gets to go over here to the blues and picks it up and throws it around. And you can just see her, you know, doing that. We were at a quantum uh, conference years and years ago and it was her job to teach all those people in the crowd how to move okay now the problem was most of those people had music skills but the moving thing okay that was a whole different one. so she would give us some pose move like this and everybody's like and she'd go look beautiful you could just see them they were like look beautiful, look beautiful. you know everybody's trying to think what what does look beautiful look like Look like you're happy. Okay, we had a few more. You know. But she was trying to get them connected into that imagination piece, into that movement piece, because we don't, do we? We don't really live there. And, you know, if you can't imagine, what would it be like to walk on the clouds? What would it be like to walk on water? If you can't imagine it, you can't, believe for it. You can't see it as a possibility. So when she was doing the whole swirling and all these different things, before long you could see the people, even though it was like they were robots, okay? <laughs> like, there was not there was not much fluidity going, let me assure you. But they were like, you know, trying to find whatever it was she was <laughs> wanting them to do. But after a while she was just pulling it in. And she was pulling from her anointing and giving it to these. And so after a while, everybody's just flinging in their arms and carrying on. And, and one goes, I just threw red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and anybody in the Christian world would just look at like, y'all have gone over to the deep dark side. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's a form of freedom and movement that we don't associate necessarily with Jesus. I don't know. Do you remember that part where he's dancing and twirling around? <clears throat> yeah. So this is the part I want you to get. When you're praying these prayers, you're asking, God, I know there's an imagination gene in me. There's some DNA supposed to be in me. Either it's covered up, clogged up, or broken. Could you fix it? When you send that message in, when you send that prayer in, then he gets to fix your imagination DNA. So it will flood you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. <clears throat> so many of these things are just, they sound like words, but if you will do what Holy Spirit would have me do for years now, just take a verse and just meditate on it all day if you need to. Just meditate. What is, what is my calling? Okay. Why do I need light for my calling? Okay. Well, the light is, is his love, his power, his glory, is everything. So for you to do his calling, the more you are having all of his provision come into you, the more you can do your calling. So he's trying to get you to understand when he's using these words, let your imagination go and meditate on it. If Holy Spirit will supernaturally reveal to you what this means for you, how it fits for you, and how it works. <clears throat> and that is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. We just talked about that this morning. Do you have enough built up energy, power in you that you can zap almost everybody before you leave this room? Yep. We're gonna do some zapping. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. Walmart, <laughs> did you hear me? I'm telling you, you just, when you get certain anointings on you, once people know you have that anointing, they'll even avoid you. 
Like, yeah, she's coming. I'm going to move over here to the other side. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Yes. <clears throat> this is the mighty power that was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. It is that power that we want to partner with. It is that power. It's not something you and I can whip up inside of us. It's something we come into agreement with. When we partner with Holy Spirit, we're agreeing that all the power that raised Jesus from the dead is now allowed to work through us. And we are the ones blocking it. We are the ones blocking it. I know I've said many times, God, I'm not blocking it. I'm not blocking it. I'm not blocking it. And as I'm saying I'm not blocking it, I'm thinking, am I blocking it? Am I blocking it? Am I blocking it? Okay. Because if I wasn't blocking it, and if I was mature enough to handle it, I do think you need to hear that part, then there would be no reason it's not flowing. Either... Well, these are the hard parts. Either you are blocking it, okay, because of some hardening in our heart or some mindset we don't believe in, you know, that we can't have faith for, or your container is not mature enough, and I mean this in the nicest way. Your container is not mature enough to handle that kind of power. I would never give... Uh, a loaded gun to a child. Okay. You all know this. You wouldn't either. But if I had a, a, a child, an older child that had been trained in it, knew how to use it, and was safe with it, I'd take them hunting. I'd go do those things with them. It's the same thing with Holy Spirit. I think so often until we have some character of Christ and some maturity in us that he knows that he can trust us. He really knows you're not going to freak out. Have you seen these guys that got a little bit of the power of God, how they turned into divas? Mm -hmm. Have you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sad. It but they just turned into divas. And I'm thinking, where's the humility? Where's the character of Christ? You ought to work backstage with the divas. Let me tell you, you know, I thought it was a joke when someone said, I need my blue M&Ms out of the M&Ms. I, th I thought that was a joke. The lady wasn't joking. She didn't like. I said, you couldn't tell the difference if your eyes were closed between a blue M&M or an orange one. You can't. Anybody who thinks they can, you got problems. You can't. But do you hear what I'm saying? Somewhere in her mind, now that's not maturity of Christ. And this is a pretty high up diva. <laughs> I'm just saying. And what it does is it makes those of us standing back going, I don't think I want that. True. I don't think I want, if that's the way they're going to be, I don't think I want that. This is what he's trying to tell us today is the power isn't in us, it's what we agree with. But I don't believe he's going to give that supernatural power to a young child. Mm -hmm. He will give it to them to a degree, but they could use it wrongly, which is what the enemy has used so much in so many different people. How many of those big names um, had sexual sin? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so hard. So, what I believe he's doing with us is getting us cleaned up, getting us mature, getting us to go through safety class, getting us to know how to handle, you know, a, a thing. Gary had to show me a, you know, my man lives on Facebook. Uh, Y'all pray. <laughs> I am. I just love him. But that's his, he loves it. He lives on there. Okay. He had to show me this picture and it says, since we're renaming everything, this is the new name for, and it has a picture of a gun. And it says, this is the new hole puncher. There you go. 
And I'm thinking, heaven help us. <laughs> but do you get my point here? <laughs> We're renaming everything, okay? And it's, yeah. I think God's wanting to bring you this power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He's wanting to bring it to you and I. The only thing that's stopping it is either you and I, something we've got messed up, something we can't believe for, or something we don't want. What I've noticed is those that really, really want that power, they really want to flow with that power, they're willing to sacrifice and obey to get it. They're willing to get up early or go to sleep late praying. They're willing to do the hard things to get to that place. They're willing to do the layers of getting rid of the junk. Y'all realize this, right? Okay, so... And now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, realm of power in existence. If you would meditate on that. <laughs> okay. You can't name anything that's messed up right now in the United States that's not under that list. Right. Not a single thing. There's not a single one of your children that's not under that list. Mine included. Do you see? There's... There's nothing. He can be, if we let him be, the ruler over all. So when the fears come, you know, and um, in this last week I've had three different opportunities to just, and that wasn't even the skydiving one, that one wasn't fearful, but I've had three other opportunities <laughs> to jump into, uh-oh, this is fearful, this is going to be bad, you don't have control of this. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen with this. This is going to be happening. And so uh, at night, I would sit there and go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And I'd go, wait one minute. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Before I go down this road, <laughs> let me stop it right here. Mm -hmm. But I had to stop it because one was in areas of physical health. One was in areas of... Um, you know, your children and your grandchildren and where they're not choosing what you want them to choose, okay? And one was in areas where all this stuff was coming together so fast it was going to disrupt all my well-laid-out plans. <laughs> Y'all know about well-laid-out plans? Okay. You know, I got, I got rules about well-laid-out plans. And this was, this has totally disrupted the well-laid-out plans, okay? So, it was... Each one of those were an opportunity. So I'm just sharing with you to have you be aware of what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing I have to do. First of all, I have to get on top of that fear before it gets any hold at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it gets any hold at all, it'll take your sleep. It'll take your peace. Yeah. It'll take your shalom. Mm -hmm. It'll take your health. It'll take everything. It'll slowly just eat it all up. Okay. So the, the point is, if we know fear is the enemy, why would we even give it a thought? Mm -hmm. And that's what he has to remind me of. If you know that this saying right here, and now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. So if I say, I am giving this to you, Lord Jesus, this is yours. Okay, I have an outcome I would prefer. <laughs> if I get to put my two cents in, I'll do so. But nevertheless, your will be done, not mine. But I need you to keep that in perspective so that I don't come into agreement with the fear. Because the fear wants to steal my peace, my shalom. The fear wants to make me do things that would show I am lacking in faith. I'm lacking in faith. And so, when I got on top of it, and I was, and it took a while with some of them, because some of them are pretty challenging issues. And it took a while. But when I did, what Holy Spirit was allowed to do in me then is come back with the faith statements of where we are. You have to, you have to battle fear as if it's a real enemy. And, and, and that it's, you know, what I look at it, it's like a cancer to me. Okay? It's like cancer to me. 
Fear is like cancer. If you give it one little foothold, it will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And it'll contaminate everything it touches. And I'm like, no, okay. But to do that, I have to be willing to take my own personal wish for it to not even be here, okay? I mean, I wish I didn't have to, I wish I didn't even have to do this. But I have to get past that. And I have to get to the place where is his love enough for me? Is his word enough for me that he says no matter what? And so when I can do that, I can capture the fear and I can literally remove it from my DNA. Because if I don't, your DNA will begin to respond to it completely. Your physical DNA will respond to fear. Your soul DNA will. And it will cripple even your spiritual DNA. So, <clears throat> just as an example, you know, I mean, I did three big ones this week. Usually they don't all hit so much, but sometimes when the things are clicking, they just click, okay? Um, another one I want you to read is, um, and you can go on and read the rest of this one, that he has um, put everything, this is important, Verse 22 and verse 23. And he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. Or another way of saying that, in even the kingdom. He's everything. And God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ and has given him the highest rank above all others. And now we, his church, are his body on the earth and that which fills him who is being filled by it. So if we're connected to the body, if we're connected to the head, then we have the same ability to have all his authority come to us to remove it. You just got to remind yourself. Look at Ephesians 3. He's doing it a little backwards today. but um, Verse 14. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect father of every father and child. <clears throat> Why this is so important is because right now the enemy is after the family. Right now the enemy is after uh, authority figures, any father figures, anything like that. We've had several prophetic words from Lori and others that this is the year we're going to fight for the family. We're going after the family. And so when it's talking about uh, the father of every the perfect father of every father and child that's talking about the family. This is what he's saying. So, <clears throat> he's our source. If you keep meditating on this, it'll come into you to where you begin to realize all these other things that we thought were sources aren't our source. It's so hard to get that. Um, for my, most of my life, education was my source. My personal family relationships were my source, okay? And so when they would mess up, as humans do, it would mess up my source. And then when I realized that most of my education that was being taught and brought into me as I thought it was my source was contaminated, then it really struck me how, how deep I had to go to dig to get cleaned up. So this is why you have to get to the realization that if... if He's not your source. It's not going to work like that. Mm -hmm. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory. Again, we're back to glory. And favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Again, we're talking about zapping. Okay. Mm -hmm. And about what it is. When the junk starts piling on you, this is where you dig deeper and dig deeper to get the glory so you can push back the junk. That's what it's about. Uh, none of us are without junk, okay? It may just be labeled a different thing or a different way. We all have our issues and our questions and everything else. But he's saying to us today, there is that flood, there is that thing. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but he says to say it again. You have got to get to the place where your source is him and where you realize it's not how you feel. Okay. 
If I say this a thousand times, you're going to have to realize it because our feelings have been given way too much. When we get our emotions redeemed, yay God, that works well. But until we get them redeemed, those feelings are triggered by the enemy to stop you relying on this source. And so, you know, if you've never done a feeling fast, I encourage you to do a feeling fast, okay? Like when feelings start coming on you, you just say, excuse me, I can't have this feeling. I'm fasting feelings. Take it to Jesus. When sadness, when anger, when all these things start coming on you, you just go, whoops, sorry, I'm fasting feelings. (laughs) I'm fasting feelings. And you'd be surprised. I used to do it with children. Now, we didn't call it fasting feelings. We called it absence. Okay. And what would happen is they felt like they needed to throw fits. Okay. I seem to have acquired all the children in the world that they would bring to me that their parents couldn't control them at all. And so they would come and be with me for an hour. And I'd go, okay. When you get upset, these are the things you're allowed to do. These are the things you're not allowed to do. So we can play the game right. And so I would literally walk them through when they would get frustrated or something and they want to go, whoops, what's the thing you can do? So I literally had to set and teach them how to not throw a fit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you can. You can teach them. If the tribes in Africa can teach their children not to cry so the lions don't eat them, Mm -hmm. I got news for you. You can shut that thing down to give them correct avenues to express themselves instead of being angry. It's all right to create a warm, safe environment where they can express themselves, yes, but not to the point where they are self, 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 me, me, me. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to teach them and train them. So what God had to do with me is realize that I, as an adult, were doing that. I had feeling fits, okay? And I would, Gary would say something to me in a wrong tone. It wouldn't even have to be something really evil. It just had to be a wrong tone. Mm -hmm. And I would get so dramatic that I could create all this junk inside of me just from his tone. I would be upset with him. I would start thinking about all the times he failed me, all the times he had messed up, all the times he did this. And pretty soon, I'd worked myself up into a pretty sizable fit, okay, because of feelings. I know I'm just talking to me this morning. But if your feelings, why do you think we fast food? It's got lots of physical properties for good things for you to fast. But the other thing is to make sure it doesn't hold you. That you aren't addicted to it. That you can, for seasons, give it up. Try fasting feelings. Try just saying, I'm not going to be sad about that. I'm not going to be upset about that. Just, Just try it. Watch what happens. And then you ask Holy Spirit to come in and give you the right feeling. You'll be surprised what happens. Does he not say he will replace evil with good? This is that. It's hard. Okay. The closer it is to you, the harder it is. And I think that's why God chose Gary in my case. Because Gary was the closest thing to me. Okay. Okay. So, you know, and he was, I don't think he's going to get sainthood, but he's gotten really close some days. (laughs) He's there. He's there. (laughs) We've heard your story. We've heard the stories. He should be. I think he just had that amnesia thing where he couldn't remember what all I did to him. So, you know, it looks better than it really was. But he just fasts. He fat he oh. totally fasted feelings. Go, yeah. Like when you're when you're through with that, then we'll talk. You know, that's what he would say to me, which made me crazier than if it is just hit, you know, whatever. 
<clears throat> but why I'm saying that is I had to work out my fasting feelings with Gary because what it was doing is damaging my marriage because I was having a whole separate marriage from Gary. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? A whole separate one. That Gary had no clue was even going on, okay, because he was not aware. Because of my feelings. When the Lord had to start redeeming my feelings, then they were more pure, if you will. They were more, am I really sad or am I just sad that I didn't get my way? That's where I was at. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is what he's talking about. If you'll meditate on these, you'll see what he's saying. Then by constantly using your faith, which means I'm not going to be upset with my feelings. I'm going to use my faith to say he will give me the right one. The life of Christ will be released deep inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source of the root of your life. When, when hard things happen and people don't choose right or they wound us or hurt us or betray us, this is an opportunity right here where you get to root into what God's source is. And when you do, the resting place of his love will literally come in. And it doesn't make sense. I mean, it... it um, in the natural, it doesn't make sense that you can still uh, be in a relationship or be with them or whatever else. But God says, this is the thing. He's your source. And we're in the month where God's showing you the roots of your life, and he wants to do that. Then you will be empowered to discover what the every Holy One experiences. This is us. The great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. So, I know I've kind of taught on things this morning that you all already know. If you already, I'm not giving you brand new information. He just says it's information you need to remember. Because what the enemy does is once you make a couple of really good steps, he's going to bring a little bit more pressure to you to try and go back. And you don't even realize it sometimes. You're, you're battling so much at what you are, you don't realize how they come in. And in my case, it came in as religious spirits. Okay, When I was battling something, uh, a person, in a well-meaning person would come in and go, you have a right to be mad at that person, and you should be mad at them for what they've done. And this is a Christian that would say these things to me. Uh, had all kinds of wonderful advice. I mean, I was told, divorce Gary. Um, mm -hmm. because he's holding you back. Mm -hmm. And this is by the possible. Mm -hmm. okay. So <laughs> let, me just, let me just tell you, sometimes mm -hmm. the enemy can use these wonderful Christians mm -hmm. to hurt you and to give you wrong information. Mm -hmm. So this is why when you're in his source and you're in his power and you're getting, the Holy Spirit can come and go, nah, that's not what we're going to do. And you can trust him because you've trusted and believed him in these small little things that I'm talking about so that when they get bigger and bigger, you have his voice there to, to minister to you. <clears throat> this is the month of the Messiah. This is the month that you need to be closer and closer to Jesus. And the only way you can get closer and closer to Jesus is by getting close to Jesus. It's really hard. Okay. It's just really hard. But we have different versions. Some people's versions of getting close to Jesus is that they feel like they have to pray eight hours a day or they have to read the word eight hours a day. May I suggest you use the gift Jesus gave to you to get the understanding of who Jesus is. He specifically says, I'm leaving you this gift that's going to teach you about me that's going to show you how to get to me, that's going to give you the directions of how to get to me. That's where we have the greatest tool. So when I say, Holy Spirit, you know the areas in my heart that are blocked. You know the things I still need to work on. What is your plan for me to get close to Jesus? You see the difference? Yours won't look like Lori's or Tammy's or anybody else's. 
Yours will look like your individual education plan for how do you get close to Jesus. And he knows the keys to unlock. He knows maybe you need to just pray in the Spirit for hours and hours and hours. And maybe you just need to focus on one verse. Okay. Maybe he wants you to just get to the place where you just sit still. I remember when he took me to my upper room and he said, now, just sit still. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> sit still. Well, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Do you want me to read? Do you want me to read the word? Do you want me to write? Sit still. That was the hardest thing. Because I'm like, but we're not doing anything. Sit still. So I sat there for the first 10 minutes and I thought of all the things I could be doing mm -hmm. that I weren't done. You weren't still because you were still thinking. You get it, don't you? Okay, and then it's like, sit still. <laughs> because see, to me, activity meant I was producing things. So if I could show what I wrote or show what I read or show what I prayed, that meant I was getting closer to Jesus. What he was having to do is cut off all those things that so easily beset me, that were snagging my attention. Okay. And he said, you've got to just sit still and be still and know that I am God. And I did not know that that was one of the hardest things for me is to just be, <laughs> okay? Because everything in me said something different. Once I got to hang at that, because at first I'm thinking, I'll go to sleep if I just sit here, you know? I mean, this isn't gonna be holy at all. I'll just go to sleep. And I remember him saying, I can do surgery on you when you're asleep too, so it's all right. So I just sat there. And occasionally he'd say, close your eyes, and occasionally he'd say, open them. And he would, it was just an obedience. Do you hear me? Occasionally he'd say, look to your left. See, he needs full control of us. Because we've got this self thing going on where we're in control. And he just needed to know, can I give you simple commands and you can obey them? sitting still. The first time I only had to sit there for about 15 minutes. The next time it was closer to 45 and the last time it was like almost two hours. And I thought I was sacrificing half my life right there because, you know, two hours like, oh my gosh, do you know what all I have to get accomplished? I'm just saying, this was my plan. I don't know what your plan will be. But I'm encouraging you to obey the simple little things he does. If he says, go drive to the park, someone, I heard that just now. He's telling someone, go drive to the park and just sit there and watch the people. <coughs> now, how holy is that? Well, let me tell you how holy it can be. You sitting there and you're praying over this Amen. person and that person Amen. and this person and that. You are sacrificing your time to be obedient to do what he says to do. Sometimes when I'm stuck in airplane traffic or something like that, he'll just say, okay, it's time to play. <laughs> and I can just hear him. He's like, okay, see the lady over there in the corner? So, blah, blah, and I'm like, uh -huh. so we just get to pray in the spirit for her. And she will never know this side of heaven. But it was just me getting to do that. It's learning to give him all of you. And he will start simple for you, then he'll keep working up more and more. He's got to get it so that you obey his commands instantly, first time, every time. And here's the reason. What's coming is a different kind of war. What's coming is a different kind of mental exercise. It's going to be an exercise in which what is coming against us will be mental anguish and things like that along with the physical. We've got to keep our bubbles. We've got to keep our atmospheres so that's not allowed to penetrate. It's not allowed to come. And if he can't give you instant commands and you follow them, 
then the enemy will send more cyber attacks in ways that you didn't realize they were coming. So this is our time. This is our month to get truly close to our Messiah, truly close to him in such a way that he can give us that strength and that power and we can flood it out so that we are supposed to be helping rescue the others. If we need rescuing, we're not going to be much able to help them. Right? That's where we're at. We're not going to be able to help much of them. All the people, you know, everybody's so upset about so many things that are happening with medical health and all vaccinations and, and all the things like that. And I says, it's just giving us opportunity. You need to hear this. It's giving you opportunity to learn how to change DNA like you've done in yourself so that when you zap one, you get to change their DNA back to original design. That's what prayer is. If they're hurting, if they've got sickness, if they got a pain, zap them with the original DNA of God. Then they get to go back to what they are. It's not only physical. We're about to come into a whole new place of mental. Please hear me. Mental, mental, mental. Because it's about to happen because he's going to do it in it. The enemy's doing it a different way. So get ready. This is where you get the opportunity to get yourself shored up, get yourself strengthened up to do that. Okay? Questions before we pray? That was just for me today, right? He was just talking to me. Okay, that's good. I just have a thought as you're just sharing that last part. It's like this is this makes sense, and especially I would say for even for intercessors, oftentimes they will walk through the very thing that's about to come against the body too. And so there's something about walking through like what the heck is going on with my thoughts, with the struggle, with the like it's like a sifting, mm -hmm. and it's like a shake a shakedown where it's like and only he remains like the plumb line. And so that's been this last season, so it really does make sense. Like this is not, it's usually not about just that person. No. It's about what God's, what God wants mm -hmm. for the body. And so I was just thinking, man, this is why we pray for each other. Like too. Right? Yeah. Like we've got to be able to pray like Paul's words. This is part of the, the body or part of the armor is mm -hmm. praying in the spirit and for the saints as well. So, yeah. Man. Yeah. And I so agree, intercessors are always farther out there than just about anybody else. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and God designs them that way. But it's so that they can protect what he's sending in. But they do experience it. And a lot of times, if they don't know it's not you, they will get all wrapped up in their own stuff, and they won't realize this is you're just carrying an intercession. That's good. Yes. And welcome back. <laughs> I was... Um... <coughs> Looking through some papers a few nights ago, I was filing some words and some stuff that I had gotten that was behind in the last few years, and I ran across um, a text conversation between you and I mm. <laughs> that I ran off and I kept. This and could be good. <laughs> it was a difficult one. We were button heads, and I was in a really, really hard time. You were trying to help me through that. And when I saw what it was, I was like, Lord, I don't want to read that. <laughs> it brings up a painful place in my life and and for me a lot of my wounds were church wounds and so with leadership and you being leadership over me has always been a, a struggle for me mm -hmm. that's most of our issues that we've had in the mm -hmm. past they're in the past, past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do I need to stand up <laughs> <laughs> and you've hung with me on that and it's, it's been incredible because it's been a tough journey mm -hmm. for, for me and I've made it tough on you yeah but I saw this, and I was like, Lord, I, I don't want to read that because it brings back painful memories. But I just really felt like Holy Spirit prompted me to read it. So I, I couldn't even read all of it, like, word for word. I was just skimming through it. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And at the time, I was in such a place that, um, and it wasn't anything, let me make it clear, nothing at all that you did to me. It was it's my own wounds. But I wanted to run so bad, and I wanted to leave, and I wanted to Really, I wanted to leave the D Dimension Center, and I was just like, I just can't. There was too much pressure. I can't. I can't stay here. Um, and my emotions were just going crazy. They were all over the place. And Yolanda had been texting me for I think several days, 
this was about a year and a half ago, and she was just hanging with me on it. I mean, it was just back and forth, the back and forth. She was hanging there, and she was saying all this really good stuff. But I, this one thing caught my eye, and what she said to me was she said, um, as your apostle, I as your apostle am asking you to be steady. And she said a lot of other stuff, but a lot of it I, I couldn't take in at that time. But that just stood out to me, be steady. And I was like, okay, I don't even know what that looks like, but I can't move forward. I can't get out of this. I can't make it stop, but I can do that one thing. I can just stand and be steady and stay and not run and not. And as I read back over that, it had even a greater meaning when I read it a couple days ago. Just, just that is so powerful. You know, that's just that place of faithfulness, of stability, of no matter what your emotions are screaming at you, of just standing and staying steady. And then I was in the bathtub, I think it was yesterday morning, and Holy Spirit brought to my memory another situation. And I think it was three years ago, this time of year, I was at a softball game for my niece, and they were in the state championship, and they won the state championship game. And there were four fields, and I was watching the game, her game on this field, and there was a field behind me, and I was just standing there watching the game. And just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a foul ball just came and hit me on the head. And I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Just the surprise and the trauma, and I just, I heard and I felt just a crack in my body and I just immediately in my spirit I knew this could be really bad like I just knew it and it was like my spirit man took over it was like everything in me wanted to just crumble to the ground or cry or say something and it's like in my spirit man something took over and I just stood there and I didn't move I didn't say a word nobody even knew it hit me it wasn't until a little while later my dad looked over and saw the ball on the ground beside me and eventually he walked over there he thought it hit the pole there was a pole but he heard it but he thought it hit the pole that was beside me and I don't really remember what happened after that or how I told him it hit me but but I was thinking about that yesterday morning and Holy Spirit told me and I had never seen this and we had talked at the time a few of us had said well the enemy was trying to take you out you know I, I saw that you said that but but what he told me yesterday morning was he said that battle was a life or death battle. Because <coughs> in that moment, when after the ball hit me and I stood there, it was like I was just staying steady and I immediately began to pray in the spirit. He said that right there was the battle between you living or dying. Wow. He said because there was a decision of how your body was going to react. How your brain was going to react to that. <clears throat> was it going to kill you or, or, or are you going to live? And I never saw. I knew it was huge in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to stand. I knew I had to pray. But I didn't, I, I didn't know why until mm -hmm. yesterday morning. I had no idea that that was such a huge battle. So it was in that standing that was where the battle was won. And so then he took me to... Uh, when, when Joshua was battling in Exodus, the, the uh, Amicalites, and um, whenever Moses had his hands raised, they were winning the battle. But then it says Moses' hands got heavy, and he got tired. And when he wasn't raising his hands, then they were losing. But then we know that Aaron and Hur lifted up and raised, raised um, his hands. And then it says in that verse that his hands became steady. And so I love that piece because mm. Holy Spirit is saying... A lot of times we think the battle looks like us marching out there or, or yelling or praying loudly or rebuking or doing all this stuff. But he said a lot of times the battle is won in that place of the steady. That's so good. And, and a lot of times there's a lot more to that. A lot of times that place is, is at a gate before you walk into that next place. Mm -hmm. And he says there's always, we know there's a battle at the gate, but what I hadn't seen is there's also always a portal at the gate. And that's that place when you stay steady and you raise up those prayers. There's That battle is going on so much in the spirit realm that that's sometimes how we battle in that place is just staying there. Just, just not moving, just being steadfast. So I feel like that's a word that the Lord is saying because over the last several days, and last night I almost texted you and then I looked and I was like, no, it's too late, you're asleep. I was like, Lord, something's going on in the spirit realm. I don't know what it is. Something is bad wrong. Candy even texted me and said, are you okay? 
And I was like, I'm okay, but something's going on. I don't know what it is. And I've just been praying and praying and praying. But it's been a strong, um, it's been a strong battle. So I don't, I don't know what it is, but I'm staying, I'm staying steady. And that's the word of the Lord today is that's where the battle is won. Stay steady. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. Ooh. What a testimony. Mm-hmm. And encouragement. It's good. It's good. I was thinking when you were talking about obedience, about the, the cost of obedience and how, you know, oftentimes we pray, like you said, in, in the airport, you're praying for people. And every time an ambulance or a police or I hear a helicopter, you know, I just go into that mode to pray for whomever. And, and then there are things that are a little more difficult. And oh, I was so shy and timid as a young adult and a teenager. But um, after standing over three coffins and looking at three dead people, that I had not been obedient to do what the Lord told me to do. I said, the third time I said, I'll never stand over another coffin and feel what I'm feeling today. And so there's been a lot of challenges, but one of the, the biggest things in being obedient is I was doing a massage one day on an OSU football player. First time he had ever been in for a massage. And I'm just finishing with him face up and the Holy Spirit says, you're done, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, are you kidding me? I knew he wasn't kidding me, but I'm like, okay. Trying to muster up the nerve to, to say, I said, Holy Spirit says I'm done, but he's not. And he goes, what? God, the Lord. But I walked out of that room, and in five minutes, I said, just, just stay here, please. Just stay here. I think Holy Spirit wants to do something. And then from my living room, I hear this athlete crying, yes, Lord, I will, Lord. You know, and it's like uh, all I could say is thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength mm -hmm. to do what you asked me to do, even though my flesh was just a nervous wreck about doing it. Mm -hmm. And so um, good job. It, it, it is those things <laughs> that we never know, you mm -hmm. know. Obedience. That's good. That's good. Okay, well, let me pray. And uh, then if you need zap today, you can see different people in here that are zapping quality. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you that you are our source. You, Father God, are our source. We thank you that you have given us Jesus as the way to get to you, to have everything we need comes through provision of everything he gained for us. Every battle he's already won for us, every thought and victory has already been done. But Father, it's us walking it out. It's us being obedient and it's us being steady, Father. So help us, help us to find that place in you this month to where we are surrounded by you, we can feel you and we can learn to just Receive our commands and do them quickly, Father. We thank you that you are preparing us for this next place. And Father, um, we just ask that you help link us together, that you help us to help each other because it's, it's not a one-person show here. We can't do it alone. We've got to have the body working together. So Father, uh, we thank you for your sweet presence. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the courage to do what we need to do. And we thank you, Father, that you give us extra faith this day to overcome all the fear. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.